IIFYM, or if it fits in your macros, is not a type of diet, guys. It's literally just an abbreviation for the same type of dieting that you've been doing, that I've been doing since day one. It's literally just saying, if it fits into your macronutrient limit, as in if it fits into your calorie deficit that you're on for your diet, then you can eat it and still get ripped off of it. We've done if it fits in your macros forever. Even if you eat the traditional clean foods only, clean brown rice, chicken breast, broccoli, you've had to fit those clean foods into your macronutrient limit for the day, right? What do I mean by that? What's macronutrients? When you diet, obviously what you're doing essentially is dropping your calories. You have a total calorie limit for that day, day to day. What makes up those calories are your three main nutrients, your macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs. One gram of protein is worth four calories. One gram of carbohydrates is worth four calories. One gram of fats is worth nine calories. So two grams of protein is gonna be eight calories. And that's how you figure out how many calories are in a given meal. There's only three essential macronutrients. Some people need more carbohydrates than others. Some people need to lower their fats or raise their fats. Some people need to increase or drop their protein. That's all personal preference. But at the end of the day, no matter what your macro levels are, you are reaching that calorie deficit that you need to be on for your body weight. If you eat the classic clean foods, right? If you're dedicated and you eat brown rice and chicken breasts every single day, all day, you're still fitting that brown rice and chicken breasts into your macros, are you not? You can't tell me that you can eat 5,000 calories of brown rice a day and not gain fat from it just because brown rice is super clean and doesn't spike insulin. I don't care how clean a food is, even tilapia. You see bodybuilders cutting up the tilapia and weighing it to get exactly four and a half ounces, six and a half ounces, because they need to fit in the exact amount of macronutrients daily. If they go above it, they're going to gain fat. If they go above their calorie deficit, they're not going to get ripped or get the results they want to get to. So even with the clean foods, you are using IIFIM. It's not a separate type of diet. It's just a phrase that goes into all dieting, period. You fit food in your macros. The only time it doesn't work for somebody is if they're not actually dieting, <laughs> if they're going above their calorie deficit. What has the, the web going crazy right now is the new information, which is not that new, but it's new to a lot of us, including myself, that you can actually expand your variety of foods that you're fitting into your diet beyond the six clean foods that we usually use in bodybuilding. The idea that all carbohydrates, although they're not the same, no one ever said they were the same, you have complex carbs, you have simple carbs, you have fiber, they come in all different forms, but the idea that all different carbohydrates, besides the vitamin count, besides how full they keep you for how long, will still just be utilized as a carbohydrate in the body and not affect fat loss. In other words, you can have 30 grams of sugar and you can have 30 grams of carbohydrates from oatmeal. Those 30 grams of carbs from oatmeal and the 30 grams of carbs from sugar are going to be utilized the same exact way. They're going to be turned into glucose and stored as glycogen and burned as energy, as a carbohydrate, as long as you're under a calorie deficit. That sugar is not going to cause any fat. People worry about insulin. I did a full video on carbohydrates. It's right here. Check that out. Your body's homeostasis only allows insulin to be spiked so much. It can't go above any sort of a healthy level. So how much it's spiked isn't going to make a difference. What does cause fat gain is how long insulin is elevated for. But that's where the calorie deficit comes into play. If you have your calorie deficit in check, lipogenesis, the process of fat gain that occurs when insulin is spiked, is only going to be peaked and storing fat for a little bit. Because you're in a calorie deficit, your body will have time to digest, break down, and lipolysis, the process of, process of fat breakdown, will come up and overpower it. Your body will even itself out, aka you're not going to overflow yourself with carbohydrates and store fat. Those carbs, even if it's just sugar, is still going to be stored as just carbohydrates and burnt up as energy, stored as muscle glycogen. Obviously, if it fits in your macros, work, flexible dieting works. It's been proven. I've been proving it for the last almost 20 weeks now. Matt Ogus, another one of my favorite YouTube channels, has achieved insane conditioning for his contest using it. A lot of pro bodybuilders use it. Even Ronnie Coleman, you can see him dumping Masterpiece Steak Sauce on his chicken. You know how many carbs are in Masterpiece Steak Sauce? He didn't just throw that in as free carbohydrates. He had to take that into account. So it's used all the time. It's just been given a bad rep. So to clear it up, I'm going to walk you guys through an entire day of if it fits in your macros and probably the most extreme version of it, which you'll find is really not that extreme. The problem is a lot of people who use if it fits in your macros get so sick and tired of people misunderstanding it, they'll go and snap a picture of a Pop-Tart and say, huh, 
Get mad at me. Look, I mean the pop tart three weeks out. You're going to tell me it doesn't work? You mad? All people see is those pictures of pop tarts in their diet, and then they say, well, that's a dumb diet. It's all pop tarts. It's not all pop tarts. My diet still consists of brown rice, chicken, potatoes. However, where flexible dieting does come into play is if you're at a friend's house, you forgot your Tupperware is full of clean foods, and you have to rely on what they have in their fridge keeping your relationship with your boyfriend or your girlfriend alive during contest prep. You can't shut out your friends and family and expect to keep those relationships for the sake of stepping on stage in X amount of weeks. So being able to go out and interact with them and go out to eat with them, if your girlfriend wants to go on a fun date with you and get ice cream or something, you can still fit that into your diet once in a while, not throw off your contest prep and still maintain a good healthy relationship and keep it fair to her or him. So check this out. This specific day, I uh, totally ran out of groceries. So I had to totally makeshift and come up with a bunch of new food to eat based on just what we had at the house. And on top of that, my girlfriend wanted to go on a pink berry date. So without further ado, guys, this is what If It Fits In Your Macros is really all about. So using flexible dieting, I dropped from a soft 190 pounds at 5'7 to a ripped 158 three weeks out from my competition while still eating fun things like cheeseburgers, cheeseburger clubs, ice cream, whenever I felt like it, just by fitting it into my macros. So flexible dieting does work. There really is no argument there. However, I want to show you guys exactly how you can make it work. So my normal diet Hunt Fitness has for me right now, three weeks out, is one cup of oatmeal, one and a half scoops of RTN's Bionic Edge Whey Protein, and one tablespoon of peanut butter for breakfast. This brings my meal number one to 50 grams of protein, 60 grams of carbs, and 15 and a half grams of fat. Well, problem was, I was completely out of oatmeal today. So what I did is I had my one and a half scoops of RTN protein, but then I went and substituted the oatmeal for a kid's cold cereal. I ended up measuring out just enough raisin bran to match the same amount of carbohydrates you would get from one cup of oatmeal. And of course the fat content is actually slightly lower in raisin bran, so I was able to add a full cup of milk to make up for the fat that I lost with the lack of oatmeal. And then adding the final tablespoon of peanut butter, all natural peanut butter, giving me my final 8 grams of good dietary fat, and bam! My breakfast still ended up being 50 grams of protein, 60 grams of carbohydrates, and 15 and a half grams of fat. Same amount of calories, same macros, even though I substituted oatmeal for a kid's cold cereal and milk. <laughs> so girlfriend time. The girlfriend wants to go out on a date, right? If you push your girlfriend away and say, I can't, I'm dieting, she's going to dump you guys. Well, me and this girl actually broke up like a week later anyway, but because of scheduling. I can assure you that the diet had nothing to do with this time. This is me eating pink berry, frozen yogurt, three weeks out from a show. That is 33 grams of carbohydrates. 32 grams of that is pure sugar. And this is what I look like. <laughs> because sugar is just utilized as a carbohydrate. And that was actually my pre-workout meal. Our muscles store up to 1,000 grams of glycogen at a time. Our liver produces 150 grams of glycogen. So you're never going to be glycogen depleted even after a workout. So my post-workout meal, and I really don't even like the word post-workout anymore because, again, your pre-workout meal is what's actually going to be digesting and fueling your muscles after you work out. When it comes to protein synthesis, that, that window is actually spiked for almost 24 hours, so there is no 45-minute window of protein synthesis you have to get in. Just get the protein in. So for post-workout, basically it's identical to breakfast. In fact, it's exactly the same as breakfast. One cup of oatmeal, one and a half scoops of uh, Bionic Edge Whey, with uh, one tablespoon of peanut butter, however, again, I'm a meathead and I forgot to buy more oatmeal, <laughs> even though I was out at the gym. So, we're doing the same thing, Raisin Bran again. And uh, this time, I actually, I had an Oreo cookie, which I didn't get on film because it was completely impulsive. I had an Oreo cookie right when I got home, just because I wanted one. So, you add that in there. That's only 2.3 grams of fat and 8 grams of carbs. It wasn't even enough protein to even count. It was like literally 0.3 grams of protein or something like that. So I didn't even count the protein. But So we subtract that 2.5 grams of fat from the peanut butter I'm supposed to be having. That and I had another cup of milk, which is another 2.5 grams of fat. So that's 5 grams of fat right there before the peanut butter. The one tablespoon of peanut butter is supposed to be 8 grams of fat. So we're going to cut that tablespoon of peanut butter in half and even a little bit less than that. And that's how you fit the fat into your macros. As for the carbs, I put in just enough cereal, about three-fourths cup, plus the eight grams of the Oreo cookie. That's going to give me my full uh, 60 grams of carbs. And then, of course, you have 
12 grams, 8 or 12 grams of protein from milk. I just did the math and I totally forget it now. 8 or 12 grams of protein from the milk and, and whatever that one was is what I subtracted from my whey protein. But either way, it's going to equal 50 grams of protein, 60 grams of carbs, and uh, 15 and a half grams of fat post-workout. I just switched the food groups up and had to play around with the dosages a little bit. Don't worry about getting fat in after your workout. Like People are worried that if you do that, it's going to slow down the absorption and that you don't want fats after your workout. I used to believe the same thing, but uh, again, guys, your pre-workout is what's handling your glycogen repletion from your actual workout. So your post-workout, don't worry about how fast or slow it absorbs. It's going to be digested over the course of hours anyway. The fat is good. It actually helps store glycogen, so get your fats in. So I have about 111 grams of protein left for the day, a whole lot of fat, 42 and a half grams of fat left for the day, and only 17 carbs. That kind of sucks, but that's what you get when you have a low yeah. day. I stole this trail mix, snacking on that, one serving, one fourth cup, it's going to give me uh, 9 grams of fat, and about 15 grams of carbs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 15 grams of carbs, 9 so grams of fat. So that pretty much uses up my carbs, a couple carbs to spare. Um, 9 grams of fat down. We like four grams of protein. It's nuts. Good, good source of fat too. Honestly, trail mix is not bad. Nuts is a really good source of fat. A lot of dietary fat in it. So if you're gonna get your fat, not a bad option. All right. So before I snack from the trail mix, we we're again at 111.5 grams of protein left. We had 17 grams of carbs left, which is not a whole lot to do anything fun with at all. And we had a lot of fat left. 42 and a half grams of fat. Now obviously that pink berry earlier threw a curveball into my carbohydrates. We know it's with a high amount of protein and a high amount of fat, not a whole lot you can do because most things that are high in fat and protein also have a lot of carbohydrates in them. So to finally get some good wholesome food in and of course get a good amount of greens in for the day because I had less than I usually do, I finally made it to Stop and Shop. Eight ounces of steak, a bowl of salad, that brought us to uh, 56 grams of protein from the steak, 12 grams of fat. And uh, the trail mix alone was 5 grams of protein, 15 grams of carbs, and 9 grams of fat. So what we had left was about 50 grams of protein and 21 grams of fat. So to make up for those numbers, I added in 50 grams of liquid protein, meeting my goal for protein for the day. Uh, and then I added in 1.5 tablespoons of olive oil. Again, a really good source of dietary fat. Just put it right on the salad and steak, 21 grams of fat. So now I have reached my goal today of 216 grams of protein, 167 grams of carbohydrates, and 74 grams of fat, bringing us to a grand total of 2,198 calories. There you go, guys. Real simple example of if it fits in your macros. Again, it's not meant to be a free-for-all. And actually, if it fits in your macros, for those who claim it's the lazy way, it actually, as you can see, takes a lot more intricacy and detail than just regular dieting, regimented dieting. So. It really comes into play when you are short on food, you need to make do with what you have, or if you just want to do something fun like, you know, keep your relationship and your social life alive. So that's it guys, last meal of the day, down the hatchet.